Do you know what this is? It's my reward, so make sure you watch on to the end of the video. Welcome back to my garden. Now, I've been pondering a few things. How do you know how many plants you're going to get from the seed packet that you've sown? Now, those of you who've been watching me for a while know that I outsource my seed sowing to my sister. I can't believe how many she got to grow. Now, if you're a novice gardener like me, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. All you need to do is to tap the button marked subscribe, and that means next time you open the YouTube app on your phone, your tablet or your computer, one of my videos will be waiting for you. Well, this is what's happening in the garden at the moment. I have got tubs and tubs of cosmos waiting to be planted out. It's going to take me a long time. But recently, I've been clearing out this bed. I don't know whether you watched the video I posted last week when I cleared out the long bed next to our hedge and got rid of lots of bindweed of native geranium. But I've also cleared this bed out so it's no longer choked with bindweed. And look what I've revealed. The fabulous hydrangea. Little and often is becoming my gardening mantra. So a couple of weekends ago, whilst it was raining, I decided to tackle this small section of flower bed and just grabbing with my hands chunks of bindweed and lots of the insipid native geranium, which I don't like. I'm conscious that when I'm picking out the bindweed, if you leave the tiniest bit of the spaghetti-like stem in the soil, it will grow up again. But I will say that now I've cleared the beds and I can see on a daily basis how much bindweed is growing out overnight, it's reasonably easy to pull it out. Although it would be much easier if I constantly had a garden fork in my hand and then I could dig down a little bit. But I'm hoping by doing my pinching out every day, it is weakening the bindweed and I'm going to keep on top of it. Can you hear the rain? I didn't want it to put me off. I thought if I just tackle this small bed area, that's a job done. I can pat myself on the shoulder. You might always also hear later on the church bells starting to ring out and I took that as a celebration of a job well done. I'm trying not to create too much mess as I go, so as I'm getting rid of the weeds, I'm actually laying them on a piece of garden tarpaulin and I just should be able to pick it up in one go and take it to the compost heap. But first, my lawn needs sweeping again. There was one casualty. We have a lovely purple clematis growing up our pergola and I noticed that it's died. So I've inadvertently, obviously, cut through one of the stems. But you live and learn. Perhaps it'll grow back more vigorously next year. And here's a nice open flower bed. And then as I inspected, I spotted some wildlife. Turn away now if you do not like slugs, snails and frogs. So these snails are making short work of the rose that a friend gave me in memory of my mum. Do you think it will grow back? Quite intriguing looking at how they uh, stretch out their antennas and move along the stems. And then the horrible slugs. There were so many of them. But all the garden is in harmony really because we do have a wildlife pond and that means plenty of frogs. So they keep everything under control. Well, they should do. Fingers crossed. Now, while my sister might start my seeds off and nurture them to the seedling and plant stage, she has asked a favour of me, and that's to keep them watered while she's away for a couple of days. So here I am in her rather nice greenhouse. I'm packing them up to take them back to my place and just dreading that uh, how much digging I'm going to have to do. I do have a couple of friends that are quite keen on gardening, so I may well offer them some of these plants. 
So these plants and all the others which I'll show you in the video come from one packet of seeds, an ordinary packet of seeds from the garden centre. I think originally my sister might just have sown half of them and then asked me whether I actually wanted the other half sown as well. And I just said yes, not quite really understanding how many plants it would result in. So she seems to have had what I imagine must have been a 100% success rate. Although I will say the yarrow or achillea that I asked her to grow from for me only had one plant of that in her greenhouse. I'm absolutely convinced that last year this hydrangea bush had literally just three blooms. So I don't know whether they have a year on or a year off. Perhaps it just takes an awful long time for your hydrangea to become established. So these blooms are too immature to enjoy in a vase. I normally cut them in September, just at the point when they're ready to dry. Now I'm rather embarrassed to show you this borage. It was the plant that I thought was a weed. And between me filming my video last week and uploading this one, they've come into flower. And in actual fact, shortly after I filmed that video, it suddenly dawned on me that this was borage, as I recognised the hairy leaves and stems. It makes quite a good cut flower, but what I thought I might do is to take some of the flowers and freeze them into ice cubes. These are amongst my first batch of cosmos plantings, looking nice and bushy. Although this one here has fallen over, so the side shoots have started growing upwards, a bit like the weed that I discovered last week. The Rose Bay Willow Herb, which I thought was going to be a beautiful perennial. And this is part of the first batch of cosmos plantings. I was a bit worried about these ones because they're actually under the shade of quite a big maple tree. But I purposefully planted them towards the edge of the border because I could see when it rained, this was the bit where the rain actually fell onto the soil and the drier bit right under the tree canopy is just behind. Well, I'm sure you don't want to watch me planting out tens of pots of cosmos. So I'm going to take my reward first and use the Hanatabra I showed you at the beginning of the video to create a little tied bouquet to enjoy indoors. My Hanatabra had seven holes in it, so I'm going to see whether I can cut seven of my homegrown flowers to enjoy indoors. And if you'd like more information on using a Hanataba, I'll make sure I leave a link to a video I posted a few days ago and you can have a full-on flower arranging tutorial. A single zinnia. I'm a little bit disappointed. Last summer, I reckon I had about half a dozen zinnias across the whole season. But this one's flowering. I am a cut flower farmer, don't you know? So it's going to get the chop and I'm going to bring it indoors to enjoy. Eek! Scabious next. So these are falling out about all over the place and that's because they've been struggling to find the light. And in front of them, last week, there was a huge ragweed, ragwort. Well, there was a huge ragwort that's been falling over the path so that's been taken out. So I'm hoping these are going to grow up a little more upright from now on. Do you think I need to prop them up? Or will they do their own thing? I'm not quite sure. So difficult to know where to cut. If I cut here, I'm not taking the whole plant and the rest of it will grow. Cutting the ragwort has also revealed my other hydrangea. And can, see, and can you see behind that the dahlias that haven't been munched are starting to thicken out a little bit? My sedum is looking pretty good too. I might cut some of that 
for my vase. And don't ask me to name this plant Verbena bonariasis. Is that right? I can never remember how to pronounce it. This plant here is a member of the nettle family. I can't remember its name. I'll have to try and look it up. But it looks to me as if that might be worth testing for the vase. Look at the square stem. Those classic nettle-like leaves. Plum-coloured flowers. And how about some fever for you next? I'm going to choose a stem that doesn't have too many heads on it because all the other flowers I've picked are quite small and I don't want my vase to be overwhelmed by one particular flower. And finally, some lavender. And let's start for me the fun part, the whole point of growing flowers in my garden so that I can get creative and arrange them to enjoy at home. So what you see me doing here is stripping off all the lower leaves and side shoots which are going to be inside my vase and inside my little bouquet twister, the Hanataba. When I bought my Hanataba, I actually paid for two. You get two for the price of one. A larger one, which is the one that you'll see me using in the video I was talking about earlier, and the one I'm going to use today, is a smaller one with just seven holes in it. And all you do is, once you've cleaned your flower stems, is to slide them into the Hanataba and then twist it. And that then splays out your flowers, giving a very pleasing overall look. I could, of course, just put seven stems into a vase but they would have just slopped over to one side and wouldn't have been nearly as impressive. Mm I'm going to cut my stems really short so the Hanataba is hidden inside this little jug which I bought from the charity shop a few weeks ago and then to put it in my favourite place which is an alcove in my dining room. Thank you for spending time with me in the garden today and if you love all things flower arranging don't forget to check out the membership section of my YouTube channel where you get early access to my Monday uploads and free access to my online flower arranging club. I'll see you again soon.